हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट प्लेट लोड टेस्ट टू डिटरमाइन बियरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ सॉयल सो फर्स्ट इट इज नेसेसरी फॉर अस टू नो व्हाट इज प्लेट लोड टेस्ट इट इज अ फील्ड टेस्ट टू डिटरमाइन द अल्टीमेट बियरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द सॉयल एंड द प्रोबेबल सेटलमेंट अंडर ए गिवेन लोडिंग and the test essentially consists of loading a rigid plate at the foundation level and for determining the settlement corresponding to each load increment so this is the plate load test the ultimate bearing capacity then takes as the load at which the plate starts sinking at a rapid rate and the bearing plate is squared of minimum size 30 cm square and the maximum size is 75 cm square and the thickness of the steel plate should not be less than 25 mm and uh, the total plate load test is carried out by two method one is the gravity loading platform method another one is the reaction truss method so let us discuss first one gravity loading platform method in this case a platform is constructed over a vertical column resting on the test plate and the loading is done with the help of sandbags stones or concrete blocks and when the loading is applied to the test plate it sinks or settle down and the settlement of the plate is plate is meaning with the help of sensitive dial gauges for the square plate two dial gauges are used and the dial gauges are mounted on an independently supported datum bar as the plate settles the ram of the dial gauges moves down and settlement is recommended and the load is indicated on the load gauges of the hydraulic jack then second method is the reaction truss method when the reaction of the jack is borne by a reaction truss the truss is held to the ground through soil anchors and uh, these anchors are firmly driven into the soil with the help of hammers and the reaction truss is usually made of mild steel sections guy ropes are used for the lateral stability of the truss and the use of the reaction truss is more popular nowadays since this is simple quick method and less clumsy so we prefer this second method or reaction truss method basically to determine the bearing capacity of soil next let us discuss the total procedure of the plate load test so first the plate placed in the central hole and load is applied by means of a hydraulic jack for conducting the plate load test and the reaction to the jack is provided by means of a loaded platform or a reaction beam at first a sitting load of 7 kN per meter square apply which releases after some time and then the load apply in increments of about 20% of the estimated safe load or 1/10th of the ultimate load so we have to increase the load continuously to test the bearing capacity of the soil and the settlement is recorded at 1 5 10 20 40 60 minutes interval and further after an interval of 1 hour for clay anatolia these hourly observations continued until the rate of settlement is less than 0.2 mm per hour so we have to note down or record all the settlement records at a regular interval of time the test conducts until failure or at least until the settlement of about 25 mm has occurred after that a load intensity settlement curve also known as a load settlement curve we have to plot for the plate the ultimate load denotes by a bracket of the load log plot between the settlements and the load intensity that is q we have to draw this graph when the break does not well defined the ultimate load takes as that corresponding to a settlement of 1/5 of the plate width on the natural plot the ultimate load obtained from the intersection of the tangents draw 
So this is the total procedure of the platelet test. So it has some limitations which we have to follow during the procedure. Limitation is size effect, uh, scale effect, time effect, interpretation of failure load, reaction load, whatever. So these are some factors which we have to, uh, limitations which we have to keep in mind during the conduct of this procedure. Next is some advantages of flat load test. First is, it is easy to perform and time and cost efficient. Then bearing able to understand the foundation behavior under loading conditions. Here evaluation of bearing capacity of soil at a certain depth and prediction of settlement for a certain load. So these are some advantages of flat load test. Next, another test is standard penetration test or SPT. It is the most popular and economical test to determine the surface information both on land and offshore. So this test or standard penetration test is conduct basically to know the information of surface or land or offshore. And this test is widely used to obtain the bearing capacity also. So the tools or apparatus required are drilling rig, split spoon, drop hammer 65 kg, driving head, guiding rod, tripod, extension rod. So these are the apparatus which we use to continue this test. This is the total arrangement of this test. So first let us discuss what is standard penetration test. Here the number of blows required for 12 inches penetration resistance of the soil is generally referred as the capital N value and measured in blows per unit penetration. And the standard penetration test is widely used to get the bearing capacity of soil directly at a certain depth. So this test also we use to determine the bearing capacity of soil. And the consistency of clay soils can often be estimated from this test. Now when a borehole is extended to a predetermined depth, the drill tools are removed and the sampler is lowered to the bottom of the borehole. Then the sampler is driven into the soil by hammer blows to the top of the drill rod and the standard weight of the hammer we use that is 62.3 Newton or 140 LBS. And uh, the number of blows required for spoon penetration of 3, 6 inches intervals is recorded. We have to record these intervals. The number of blows required for the last two intervals are added to give the standard penetration number at that depth. The next the test procedure. First we have to we have to erect the tripod over the test hole and assemble the total unit. Then we have to allow the spoon to rest on the bottom of the hole. The next drive the spoon with blows from the hammer falling 75 centimeter until either 45 centimeter have been penetrated or 100 blows have been applied. Next we have we record the number of blows required to effect each 15 centimeter of penetration. The first 6 inches is considered as setting drive. And the number of blows required for the second and third 15 centimeter of drive added is recorded as the penetration resistance value N of the soil. So we record these values. So this is the total procedure. Next is the important thing. This is types of bearing capacity failures or shear failures of soil. So a bearing capacity failure is defined as foundation failure that occurs when the shear stresses in the soil exceeds the shear strength of the soil. That means whenever the bearing capacity or the soil cannot bear the load or external load automatically it fails. This is known as bearing capacity failure and it is of three types general shear failure, local shear failure and last one is punching shear failure. So let us discuss one by one. First one is general shear failure. In this type of failure, failure takes place at a very small strain. At failure, entire soil mass within the failure ways participates and well-defined rupture surface develops. And basically this type of failure occurs in stiff clay or in dense sand. This figure shows the general shear failure. 
and the failure is accompanied by considerable blogging of seared mass of soil. Second one is the local shear failure. This type of failure occurs in medium dense and with relative density between 35 to 70 percent. And in this type of failure, the failure takes place at a very large strain and the load settlement curve does not show a well-defined peak like the figure, this is the figure of local shear failure and the curve shows increases in resistance after failure. So last is the punching shear failure. This type of failure occurs in loose sand or soft clay with relative density less than 35%. And in this type of failure, footing penetrates into the soil without any bulging in the soil at the surface. And here increase in vertical load increases the vertical movement and compression in the foundation soil. So here if we increase or give the vertical load more or the vertical load increases then vertical movement also increases also the compression in the foundation soil increases and the failure is accompanied by vertical shear around the perimeter of the footing this figure shows the punching shear failure so with this the chapter 9 is completed so thank you